Sekiro Long May the Shadows Reflect is a hellish nightmare that is designed to make you feel a miserable rookie shinobi. Apart from its excruciating difficulty, this mod adds new moves, new techniques, new enemies, new mini-bosses, and makes everything look cooler. I mean, battles look like this, for God's sake. So, after deciding to try out this challenge, I guess there's only one question we can ask ourselves. Will I come out on top and conquer this insanely difficult mod? Well, there is only one way to find out. The intro to Sekiro went pretty much as in the regular game, with a quite dumb first death of the run. We got to Kuro, talked to him for a bit, and received our beloved Kusabi Maru and the Healing Gourd. I had the option to give Kuro's charm back to him, but... Yeah, sorry, I, I don't hate myself that much. After all of that, the run properly begins, and so far, the first enemies didn't seem much harder, and a single perfect deflect was enough to pierce through their posture. Leader Shigenori Yamauchi, on the other hand, immediately let me know that he wasn't messing around. Three whole health bars, insane armor, and powerful blade swings that were honestly no joke. He managed to break my posture once, but I quickly abated his attacks and after a while, I put an end to my battle with Yamauchis and continued my escape. I met Kuro and we rapidly snuck into a tunnel to escape Ashina, but on our way we found someone that was blocking our path. Genichiro Ashina. Would this fight be any different? Well, I would love to tell you, but I got wrecked on his first combo and he cut my arm off and took Kuro away from me. This is not a great day. Wolf woke up in the sculptor's temple, and now it was time to fight our way to Ashina Castle to get our little master back. And so, I began my journey through the Ashina outskirts. General Naomori Kawarada was a tough enemy to defeat, and I died when I almost had him. For the most part, I had my posture meter at its limit, which meant that one single block that wasn't perfect would immediately break my posture, and in long may the shadows reflect, that often means death. After a long some battle against the general, I came out on top and claimed a prayer bead and a gourd seed. I tried to advance while being sneaky to the first shop in the game, and hey, did this guy always sell Robert's firecrackers? Well, I don't care, I'm buying them. After getting scolded by a chicken, I ran through the last line of defense before the ogre, and I discovered that heavy cannon snake eyes were trying to blow me up in pieces. I tried to face them head on for a bit, but one explosion was enough for me to say nope and get the hell out of there. I tried to masterfully block an incoming artillery explosion, and soon enough I was up against the chain ogre. There was an additional big guy hidden in a corner, but I spotted him and stabbed him in the back before facing the weird red-eyed discount Shrek. And this fight was just... tiresome. I slowly drained his health while dodging his powerful attacks, even though I got occasional launch to the stratosphere like I was an astronaut from the Apollo 13, but eventually I defeated the Unchained Menace and was able to proceed to the next mini-boss fight. But before that, I went to upgrade my healing gourd, got the shinobi text, and activated the shuriken prosthetic and the firecrackers one. General Tenzin Yamauchi was more of the same and honestly, it wasn't even that hard. Wasn't this the hardest Sekiro mod ever made? Where, where, where is the difficulty? I, I, I honestly could not appreciate it. I spy, I spy, I spy with your little eye, bitch! Welcome to the first proper boss fight of Sekiro, with none other than... This guy is something else. Gyobu is quick, his spear hits like a truck, and his health pool is ridiculously large. Just as I stepped into this fight, I knew it was going to be a nightmare. And it definitely was. So before trying that again, I decided to pay a visit to the Hirata State, and I battled my way through the bandits and the occasional new elite purple shadow, that the mod decided to throw against me. As some of you will know, the Mikiri counter is an ability essential in Sekiro, so it is logical that in this mod it will also be pivotal to achieve victory. 
Shinobi Hunter Enshin of Misen really wanted to teach me this lesson, and so he dragged me through the mud until I was able to perfect the Mikiri counter and defeat him, getting a much needed fourth prayer bead. After that, there was a new mini boss waiting for me in the bridge, a lone shadow, and after carefully considering my options, I went back to face Gyobu, now with a little bit more posture, damage, and vitality. We crossed our blades, and our duel was legendary. One thing I loved about Long May the Shadows Reflect, and you will see it in the late game fights, is that it looks like you are a badass. Look at Sekiro, deflecting this giant spear and methodically approaching... Uh, oh, oh well, don't, 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 yeah, don't look at that, don't look at that. As I was saying, this battle was really cool, and thanks to my increased attributes, I was able to barely escape from the jaws of defeat and put an end to Gyobu's Castle Gate's watch. After failing miserably the Blazing Ball skip, I decided to battle the beast, and to my surprise, it was quite easy to be honest. This enemy feels a bit out of place, and with that, I got to Ashina Castle, and at the very top, my master awaited me. And speaking of getting to places, if you managed to get this far into the video, then consider subscribing. It helps out a lot to battle the fearsome YouTube algorithm. Also, I wanted to ask you if you have tried out Sekiro, and if so, if you have played some of the mods that people has made for the game. Some of them are incredible. Was Tomoe recycled into Malenia, by the way, in that DLC that Sekiro had cancelled? It's an unrelated question, but I honestly think she was. Anyways, back to the video. Back in Ashina Castle, I defeated yet another general samurai, and while climbing through the roofs of the watchtowers, a comet descended onto me, bringing me those traumatizing Radan flashbacks. It was a Nightjar mini-boss, and honestly, it was one I could not defeat right now. So I went elsewhere, more precisely, to the path to Senpu Temple, and after clearing the initial area, I discovered there was a double mini-boss ready to challenge me to a battle to the death. And I wasn't ready for that, so instead, I dodged the Lone Shadow in the Hirata state and proceeded to fight Juzo the Junkard. Wait, was it Juzo the Drunkard? Duzo the Junkie? Well, anyways, I faced the drunk guy with the help of one of Ashina's finest. It took me a lot of attempts, but thanks to my faithful ally and some purple confetti, I was able to take out the Drunkard and advance to Lady Butterfly the second proper boss I encountered in this mod. Yeah, I guess I am just a puppy. I was in a bottleneck, Lady Butterfly was just too powerful, the double trouble in Senpu Temple was a big no-no, and that Nightjar Ninja was impossible to defeat. So what now? Well, you see, up to this point I have learned a valuable piece of knowledge. One that I will share with you just in case someday you decide to tackle this mod. Prosthetic tools and skills are everything. So I basically decided to grind in Senpu Temple and in the Ashina Reservoir for hours, until I got every skill unlocked and every prosthetic tool upgraded enough. After completing my training arc, was it worth it? Hell yes! The seven Ashina Spears was completely destroyed after many many attempts getting impaled, because he encountered the most dangerous enemy of them all, gravity. <laughs> then I went to earn my payback for what the ninja had done to me. No summoning hounds could save now this poor soul, and I danced with my katana until I became victorious. I went to the top of the castle, and there stood the man that had cut my arm off, Genichiro Ashina. And he was accompanied by Lady Emma and Kuro, my master. Our paths crossed again, and soon, our blades would do so. It was going to be a battle the poets would write songs about. What a fierce fight. Genichiro is somehow even quicker, hits harder, and now his bow shoots fire arrows that obliterate your vitality. But I also had some tricks up my sleeve, thanks to the fire prosthetic tool and some arts I learned on my grind back in Senpu Temple. But Genichiro is no joke, no laughing matter and he defeated me lots of times. And I cannot emphasize enough how many times he defeated me. What an incredible foe. Any mistake usually implied dying, but after a long and tiresome fight, I managed to get Genichiro on his knees, exhausted. And then he took his armor off and I got nervous, 
What are those incredible apps, my man? What is going on? I'm feeling lady butterflies in my stomach. Uh, well, enough of that. Did you have fun going through Genichiro's three whole health bars? Well, now it is time to face him in his way of Tomoe form. And look at that, he has an attack combo that instantly kills you. I wonder how many times he's going to use that. Hey, guess what? The answer is... A lot! Try after try after try after try, there was no way of defeating him. His lightning attacks were too fast to dodge, his grab had infinite range, and overall I couldn't land a single blow on him. Not even using my fire tricks or my little poisonous Kodachi could do the trick. It was time to face reality. I had to try my luck elsewhere. And that elsewhere was the other two stop signs I had encountered previously on that bottleneck situation. Lady Butterfly was the first one to go after some attempts and a gruesome fight in which I had to bring my top-notch skill set. The fire tricks were really useful and I tried to loop trap her into the same combo over and over again, with some degree of success. After claiming more attack power from her, I went to Senpu Temple and battled the monks, which were annoying but they weren't the threat they once were. And after them, I kept going through the mountains of Senpu until I arrived to the wooden bridge that Robert's father protects. This fight is the one that makes or breaks you in long way the shadows reflect. This armored dude inflicts you curse, a new status effect exclusive to the mod that can have different outcomes depending on which enemy you are facing, such as acting as toxic poison that drains your health, having your posture meter at the breaking point permanently, or reducing your health to a minuscule bar. After the armored knight gets his purple death eyes, this fight transforms into a deadly lesson of perfecting your blocks and deflects, and oh boy, it is insistent on teaching it to you the painful way. Weirdly enough, this is also an incredible fight to master your Sekiro skills, and overall, it is pretty cool, and although I died a lot, for sure, I also find an immense satisfaction when I push the guy to the abyss. After overcoming the bridge trial, I kept going up to Senpu Temple until I reached its highest point, and since I cannot yet reach the Sacred Child, I grabbed everything I could before going back to Genichiro. Oh yeah, motherfucker, it is time for round two. Fight! Even though I perfected regular Genichiro, its Tomoe version was just too much, too tough. His bitch too bad, his swag hits too different. My deflections were almost always on point and still, his lightning attacks were too quick for me to handle and some of Genichiro's combos were guaranteed to break my posture and consequently resulted in my death. I tried and tried and I tried, I swear to god I tried and at some point I decided to take a break from the game and move on to other things. Perhaps this video wasn't going to exist after all as no one wants to see me reach Genichiro and then surrender. But then, one day, by some fucking miracle, I booted up Sekiro and this happened. Yo, yeah, baby! That's what I'm talking about! After conquering Ashina Castle, I talked to Em and Kuro and decided to gather some items to sever the immortality ties. And for that, I needed to explore new areas. So off I went to the gun fort, where the proud Snake Eyes clan bombarded me with artillery shells, powerful shots, and a pretty hard mini boss. However, after that Genichiro fight, I felt invincible. And even though I surely wasn't, I kept advancing to reach the items that Master Kuro needed for his ritual. Once the Gan Fort was conquered, I realized there was a really easy way to gain more attack power. The Folding Screen Monkeys. This fight is a joke and a puzzle of sorts, but for some reason I just needed to kill two monkeys and the boss fight ended? If you know what exactly happened here, tell me in the comments, please. Anyways, with that I paid a visit to the Sacred Child and obtained the Mortal Blade, a really powerful tool incorporated into our arsenal. With a mighty weapon in my hands, I faced a mighty electric monk that swingled like a Beyblade. And once I defeated him, I went to earn some payback to the Hirata state. Remember this lone shadow on the bridge? I do, 
and I'm going to make sure he does as well. The battle was really challenging and I died a lot of times, but finally I was able to get revenge on him. F*** you, Lone Shadow. It is time to face the Great Ape, but just before that, let's debate the Great Serpent with its missing eye and fight a dual katana albino monkey. Yeah, you heard me right. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's go to face the real challenge. The Guardian Ape first face was honestly not that bad, and with the Mortal Blade in my hands and some prosthetic tricks up my sleeve, I managed to beat him on my first try. The Undead face, however, was a whole other ordeal. After getting absolutely destroyed, I decided to try my luck elsewhere and fought Snake Eyes Shirahaji in the mandatory Poisonous Swamp. Once I had dealt with the powerful Guns Woman, I reached the Mibu village, gathered some cool items and tried to cross blades with Orin of the Water, but her skill level was way higher than mine. Yeah, the next couple of hours are not going to be fun at all. After countless attempts and a close call, I defeated the Ghost Lady and moved on to the next mini-boss, Mara Taro, the Bell Fat Dude. He inflicts curse, of course he does, and first you have to deal with 174 villagers that are luring nearby, but once you have dealt with them, Mara Taro is not that hard, even though the curse effect randomly stuns you for a second or two. After defeating him and getting my fifth prayer necklace, I wanted to give a try to the Corrupted Monk, and as usual, I got wrecked pretty hard. So I spent the following hours going back to our areas and facing mini-bosses here and there, such as a random snake eyes, another albino monkey with two katanas and some more. But after a while, it was clear to me that I needed to toughen up and duel both the guardian ape and the corrupted monk to keep advancing. I promised Master Kuro and, as the Iron Code mandated, I needed to succeed. Baylor wasn't an option. I chose to battle the Guardian Ape first, and it was an incredible fight. I have previously bought a Curse Protection Gourd, and it proved really useful here, as I deflected the Guardian Ape's Curse Blade and its horrendous screams. And just when I was really close to beating him, my recording stopped, because my PC was out of memory. And I beat the Guardian Ape without realizing it. <sighs> Being a YouTuber sucks, dude. After gathering the item I was looking for, I went to Mivu Village to fight the Corrupted Monk, and with my increased attack power, it wasn't that bad. Fair enough, the Monk didn't use her Shadow Clone Jutsu technique that much, so it was a forgiving fight in the end. This meant that I finally had all the items Master Kuro wanted, so it was time to go back to Ashina Castle, which is not doing so hot right now. The Ministry of Interior had invaded and absolute chaos had ensued, in the heart of the Ashina land. There was a messy intense fight going on in the castle between the Ashina Samurai and the Purple Shadow Ninjas, and while I was there, I defeated another Chain Ogre using oil and fire, which proved to be quite effective. After that, I kept exploring the castle and fought some new mini-bosses and I obviously was destroyed by them. After making my way to the top, and even battling a fearsome long shadow on my way there, I surprisingly found Owl, Sekiro's father, talking to Master Kuro on the rooftop. He wanted to obtain immortality and, for that, he asked me to relinquish my bond with Kuro and obey the Iron Code. Wolf had believed for all his life that the Iron Code was absolute, but something had changed in him and it was his and my desire to keep protecting Master Kuro and achieve his dreams of severing immortality. That's the reason Wolf said no to Owl, and a fight between the two became inevitable. And I was fearing this boss fight for quite some time, as Owl in the base game is already really tough and uses all the shinobi tricks in the book to gain the upper hand. So, was it as bad as I had imagined? Yes, it was. Fire explosions, quick combos that broke my posture, poisonous shurikens, firecrackers, everything you could imagine was on the Owl's arsenal. After countless attempts, I decided to actually tank the anti-healing balls all threw at me and take that time to damage him as much as possible. It was a bold strategy, but it proved to be also an effective one, and soon after that, the apprentice had surpassed the master, and the great shinobi fell. I talked to Emma and Kuro and determined that I had to travel to the Fountainhead Palace. And on my way to the ceremonial rites that would ascend me to the sacred realm of the Divine Dragon, I encountered a curious minis boss fight, the Shadows of Mibu. 
It works sort of like the Deacons of the Deep in Dark Souls 3, and it consisted of running around for quite some time and sneaking in some hits to the old villager. Once they were defeated, this giant hood stigman grabbed me and ascended me to the Fountainhead grounds. But just before reaching that, I had to face the true Corrupted Monk, with its whooping 4 health bars, and this was truly the hardest fight yet. The Corrupted Monk was fast, elusive, and demanded an absurd reaction time. She used her Shadow Clone Jutsu techniques, of course, and could also inflict curse on me if I wasn't careful. I spent hours trying and trying and trying, and testing different prosthetic tools and skills to try to beat her, until I found out that the purple umbrella was the best option to protect me from her Shadow Clones. And after a lot of tries, and I do mean a lot, I defeated her and I finally reached the Fountainhead Palace. The Fountainhead Palace is perhaps my favorite area of Sekiro, but it's full of bullshit, let's just face that. The Flute Elder Nobles, the Okami Clan, the Sacred Fire Bull, the Gargantuan Carp God. So what does this mod entail for me? Well, the Sacred Fire Bull was as bullshit as I expected, pun no intended. And there was some new mini bosses that copied movesets such as the Chain Ogre one. Those were pretty cool. I also feared the electric Okami footballer that awaited me on top of the big tree, but it wasn't that bad. Overall, I managed to traverse the region with not that many hardships, until I reached the stairs that would bring me to the Divine Dragon. There, the two Okami leaders decided to make my life miserable for a couple of days, with their constant electric attacks. This double fight reduced to waiting for a lightning attack, absorbing it and returning it hoping to hit both of them. It was exhausting. But I ended up claiming victory and climbing the stairs to have a divine audience with the root of all the conflict in Ashina. And to my surprise, the divine dragon was actually easier than the regular fight, which made me laugh for a bit. I defeated him on my first try, used the Mortal Blade to gather some Dragon Tears and returned to Ashina Castle to barrel even more mini-bosses. But after all of that, only one foe was in my way of achieving Master Kuro's dreams, and I knew it was going to be a nightmare to battle him. I went to the same place where Genichiro cut my arm off and all those months ago and embraced myself for the final fight. Ishin Ashina, the Sword Saint the hardest boss on Sekiro, the coolest, the toughest. It is an incredible feat to beat him in the regular game, but in long may the shadows reflect, that would be a miracle. I needed skill, luck and everything I got on my side to defeat the Glock stand user and I wasn't sure I had it in me. But first, let's get wrecked by Genichiro Way of Tomoe for some time, okay? Having to face this guy before Ishin Ashina is a sick, evil joke. I poured hours mastering the fight against Ishin's grandson, learning how I could dodge his mortal blade and his insane lightning combos. I also used my arsenal to its full potential, even using a lightning attack with a new item that the mod provided me after defeating some mini-bosses. Eventually, I got so good at the fight that I would regularly beat Genichiro without even healing once just as it happened to me 5 years ago with regular Genichiro in regular Sekiro. But with that, the final challenge was upon me. The Sword Saint. Weskis, just play the record, will you? What a warrior. Ishin demands perfection, mastery at the shinobi skills, and sometimes, even that isn't enough. His wind slashes are suffering embodied into an attack. His Ashina skills broke my posture every single time, and the Mortal Blade attacks cursed me with a truly evil status effect, negating my resurrections. I tried endlessly, and sometimes I would even get to phase 2 of Or in which the Sword Saint pulled out his Glock and his Spear. In this phase, his combos got so absurd that I felt this was designed so no one could beat it. It was impossible. There was no way. It was painfully obvious that this was just a sick form of torturing myself. So, why I kept trying? Why I kept going? I honestly don't know. But yet I grinded. 
fighting Ishin over, over, and over again. I realized that I was getting better at the fight. I was still getting demolished, sure, but there was an improvement. And with improvement, there was hope. So I kept pushing. I kept pushing. I kept trying for God knows how long, but I kept pushing. And then, this happened. Yeah, it still wasn't enough. I had become an excellent shinobi and a master of the blade, but yet Ishin Ashina was just too powerful. I had to admit it, I couldn't beat this guy. It, it had been too many hours. But yet, what an impressive feat to reach this point. So, can I beat Sekiro's hardest mod? Well, no. But damn, I got really fucking close. And what a journey it was. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. And until we meet again, Shinobi.